and you'll see that Miss Dixie Morales is here with me. She's Hi. going. She's going to lead a um, Spanish presentation of the same exact thing we're doing now. So if you require this presentation in Spanish, um, I'm going to ask that you um, use the raise your hand option, which you can access by clicking on participants at the bottom. Um, and, or is it that? Yeah, participants, and then you should see a, an option to raise your hand, and it'll put a little icon next to your name, and I can assign you to the Spanish breakout. Miss Dixie, translate, please. Si, si quieren la presentación en español, la presentación se ofrecerá en español por mí y lo único que tienen que hacer es que ir a participants abajo de su pantalla y poner la manito que dice, que, que sube la manito para decir que quiere la, la programación en español. Ok, I see some coming up, so I'm going to start adding uh, people to breakout rooms now. Okay. Are there any other hands? I got one of them. Alguien más? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open the room, Miss Dixie. I uh, have you in it. I'm going to open it and it'll send both of you that way. And then you guys can just join us whenever you're finished. Make sure you hit record when you're there. Okay. Okay, I just want to make sure that they went over successfully and it looks like they did. Okay, so welcome to our meeting guys. I'm so glad that you all have joined us. I'm going to share my screen here with you, which will be the presentation that we'll be going over. So it'll, you'll see it come across your screen there. All right, so I can still see a panel um, as I'm presenting, but what I cannot see right now are any kind of comments um, or raising of the hand or anything like that right now, um, but I'll toggle back and forth between the two of them. So I'm going to go over some meeting norms. Obviously, this meeting is to kind of debrief you on the most recent updates from our school district and um, I will kind of clarify what that means for Eastwood Academy and uh, try to answer any questions at the end of the presentation uh, should you have them after we are finished um, presenting. So um, these are just some virtual meeting norms. We go over these kind of norms with our students too so that there's not a lot happening all at once that pose as a distraction. So obviously respect the virtual setting. Um, this means muting your microphone until you're called on to speak so that we don't get some of the background noises that happen naturally in the environment. Um, when you are called on, please mind your airtime. And what that means is um, hopefully you're listening intently and taking notes. Um, so that whenever, if, if, you, if you have a question and it's answered either in the presentation or by someone who's asked a question previously, um, obviously we would uh, like to not repeat questions, um, but if you didn't hear it, we understand. And then also using the tools that are available to ask questions or raise your hand. At the bottom of your screens, you should see some menus like participants, chat, reactions, um, and so play around with those. If you have a question, you can put up your hand and we will get to you as soon as we get to the question and answer section. All right, this is our agenda for the meeting today. It looks lengthy, but it's really um, kind of brief. Uh, so we will be covering all of these things. Notice that um, on campus instruction as a choice is on there, but we will not be going into depth with that because we don't have a lot of details regarding on-campus instruction since it's not how we're starting the year. Okay. These are the frequently contacted personnel. I encourage you to take a screenshot or take a picture of this screen. Um, we noticed in the spring that these are the people that were most frequently contacted um, when we were in the virtual setting. So obviously you all have my email address and my cell phone number, um, but technology. So Ms. Wajardo, Natalie Wajardo is the contact person if your child breaks a screen by accident or 
some has some kind of malfunction with the computer or with a hotspot, anything related to technology, she is the person to email and she's been very good about meeting up um, to switch out laptops or to troubleshoot whatever's going wrong with them. So she's a very important person. Um, this year, since we don't have Mr. Menno with us, congratulations to him, he's now a principal. Um, we do have Ms. Varela, who has taken his place as one of our administrators. So if your child has last names A through M, Ms. Dixie Morales is the person to contact if you have um, a question about a schedule or want to change a class um, or, or if there's any discipline issues in the virtual setting or face-to-face, -face, she will be the person handling those for those last names. And this Ms. Varela will be handling last names L through Z, same thing with schedules and student discipline. And there's her email address as well. For attendance, um, and this is very important, when we get to the attendance section of the presentation, I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions. Um, if at any point you have an issue with your child's attendance or have a question or need to um, let us know that you will be absent, she is the person to contact and there is her email address. Ms. Perot also handles our VOE's verification of enrollment. We have two people that do that, Dr. Baronke and Ms. Perot, um, but she'll usually get it to you within the like minutes of asking. So um, she's also the person for that and anything related to student records or admissions. All right, so you guys have all seen this. Um, it's been all over social media. This is the timeline for reopening. HISD has made the decision to push back the first day of school to September 8th. So that will be the very first day of school that students should be logging onto their computers and reporting to class virtually. Um, and then at the end of the six weeks, um, we will start phasing in face-to-face -face instruction. And so you will have an opportunity to decide whether or not um, you want to send your child to face-to-face -face instruction at that time. And we'll get more to, into some detail about what that looks like as well. Um, so on here, when they first published this, it says that, you know, you're going to have the option to choose remote instruction for the entire semester. Um, please know that what I'm being told now is that you don't, you are not locked into the entire semester. So starting on August 24th, you're going to get a phone call from the district asking you to they're going to say, do you feel comfortable sending your child um, to on-campus learning in October? If the answer is yes, then you will be, your child will be in face-to-face -face instruction the second six weeks cycle. And so at the end of the second six-week cycle, you will have another choice to make. Do I want to continue sending my child for the next six weeks or not? So there's a selection to be made at the end of each six week grading cycle because we never know what happens, right? It might get a little bit more dangerous, it might not. And so um, if you opt to stay virtual for the second six weeks as well, you can always change your mind at the end of the six weeks. But what we ask, um, not just for logistical purposes, but also instructional purposes, is that you remain in place um, at a minimum for each six weeks. So um, we can't do schedule changes or anything like that in the middle of the six week grading period. All right, so on-campus learning, this is the only slide for on-campus learning because it's all we know right now. So um, when we start phasing in face-to-face -face instruction, there are obviously some uh, procedures and policies we have to follow. Um, everybody that enters the building, not just employees, will be screened before entering. We are severely limiting the amount of visitors allowed on campus. Even right now, I'm here in my home, I'm not allowed to be on campus either. Um, obviously, all employees and people who visit the building will be required to wear uh, face masks the entire time they're on campus or in a building. Um, and then of course, adhering to regular hand washing and maintaining our physical distance requirements. So um, this last bullet here is, is, is very difficult. What the district has been telling us is that they're sending out people to look at campuses. Um, and based on the six feet uh, social distancing requirement that's in place right now, um, it's, it, it's not looking good, right? I mean, you can only fit nine to 11 kids in a classroom. And at Eastwood Academy, we average about 25 per classroom. So um, it's just not possible right now to be in a face-to-face -face setting with um, all of our students in, in the building. So um, the idea of phasing in on-campus instruction is a good idea, um, but also it depends on the numbers, right? So if we have 100% of our family saying, yeah, we wanna send them to school, it's gonna be very hard to meet those physical distancing requirements. So um, we will cross that bridge when we get there as we get closer to the end of the six weeks and hopefully the virus lets up. Hopefully there, um, well, there will be more 
um, direction from the district as we get there, if we get there. Okay. All right, so let's start with virtual learning, which is kind of what this whole presentation is about. Um, as stated before, um, virtual learning will begin on September 8th, and that's at 8.30 in the morning. Your child will be expected to log on and report to their first period class virtually. Um, and these are the highlights for kind of, you know, what you need to know about it. Attendance matters this time around. Grades matter. And final exams will matter. Um, so final exams are scheduled to take place. Uh, we will be assigning grades and attendance will be taken daily. Um, our Eastwood at Home site, for those of you that were with us in the spring, um, Eastwood at Home is the site that we created uh, just specifically for Eastwood Academy, where we housed everything to do with virtual learning. So how to contact every teacher, their email address, any bulletins that came out from me, like the Boxer Bulletin you saw this meeting invite for, um, everything that you would need to know is kind of housed um, on this virtual site. So, and you can get to it by going to our uh, regular website and you can get to it by using this red uh, link here. Um, right now, if you go there, you will see everything from the spring, but we are working diligently throughout the summer to get that updated no later than August 31st. So if you log on on August 31st, you will see everything um, that's updated for the fall semester. Okay, so when we're in our virtual um, learning environment, it is we're using what's called an asynchronous model. Um, meaning they don't happen at the same time. The teacher and the student are not in sync. So there's not a requirement um, to always be on at the exact same time to receive your lessons. Now, we wholeheartedly believe that you, your child will get the best experience by being logged on at the same time as their teacher because they will have live lessons at each class period and you'll get a chance to talk to them back and forth just like we're doing here. Um, and so we know that that works and, and we've seen a lot of success with the kids that log on for the live sessions when they happen because they're they're getting a step by step demonstration from their teacher. They're able to see how the teachers um, completing the assignments. They get to ask live questions and get that feedback. So we encourage your child to be online at the same time as the teacher when they're uh, presenting, but it's not required. So we understand if they have if your child is taking care of younger siblings because you're going back to work or any other things that might come up that prevent them from uh, being online at the time of the live session. All of our teachers, all teachers in HISD are required to record their live lessons, so they will always be accessible after the fact. Um, and then, of course, asynchronous model allows for some flexibility. The standards are still there. It's still the same instruction. It's still the uh, level of rigor that you would expect at Eastwood Academy, but it provides them with multiple opportunities to work. Um, at their own pace with other students. Uh, and, and so it's just kind of more flexible for, for children. Um, and so that's kind of this, the summary of what, it, what we mean when we're talking about an asynchronous model. Okay? And of course, it would still include the accommodations that are allotted to students with, um, that have accommodations allotted to them. All right, so I guess the big thing that's different from this fall semester versus spring is that you'll remember in spring, we were all kind of just thrown into virtual learning. There wasn't any kind of roadmap. Um, our teachers had never had to do it before. I certainly have never um, been involved with online learning in that regard either. So teachers were all over the place. Um, I was all over the place, like go here, go there, log in, all these different passwords and whatnot. So what the district has required is that all students will access instruction from the same exact place. This is everybody in the school district. They will all go to the hub, and I'll show you guys these platforms in a little bit. They will all access their lessons, instructions, videos, links in the hub. So anytime your child is waking up and they're going to school um, to find out what's happening for the day, they're going to look at the hub, um, and that's where they will gather their information. Microsoft Teams is the other platform we will use, and all of your uh, students should be familiar with these except for incoming ninth graders at this point, um, or maybe they had experience last year in the eighth grade as well. Microsoft Teams is the exclusive platform for communication. So when we do live videos or live lessons, or we're talking back and forth to students through a chat um, platform, that's Microsoft Teams. So Talking, communication, collaboration, videos, that's Microsoft Teams. 
and the hub is just where all the curriculum is, okay? Uh, we are using Zoom today because I anticipated having a lot of people that are not in Microsoft Teams right now, um, but, the, but the district has notified us that we can now invite guests. So from this point forward, we'll be using Microsoft Teams uh, for our community meetings as well. All right, tests. Tests are still happening. <laughs> they didn't happen in the spring, um, kind of canceled star testing and all that good stuff. We didn't have final exams. There were AP exams and they were online. But this school year, no matter what the environment is, all of these exams will take place. Um, as far as dates, we will publish that on our um, website as soon as we have them, and they will be uh, published in our student handbook as well. STAR will happen, SAT, PSAT, all of these exams will happen, um, but the platform is yet to be determined. Um, Eastwood historically has, test, has tested STAR online anyway, so hopefully we will be at a point where we're in face-to-face -face instruction everywhere. <laughs> but even if we're not, um, there is a lockdown browser and a very um, secure way to administer these exams in an online virtual setting as well. Um, these three, SAT, PSAT, and advanced placement, these are um, college board exams. And so we have to wait for direction from them as far as how it will be administered. Um, and it's always very different from STAR and the other exams that we give. So. Um, as we get information from the College Board, we will push that out to you all as well. Okay, and like I said before, final exams are happening uh, for both semesters this year as well. All right, grading. Um, so in the spring semester, we were told that all category weights for assignments had to be weighted equally, meaning a test is not worth more than a classroom assignment, right? That was in the spring semester. But for this coming school year, um, these decisions have been left to the, to the individual schools to decide. So um, I have put together a teacher tech committee consisting of teachers and some administrators, and we will work together to decide what these category weights should be for Eastwood. Um, I think it's important that we have uniformity, and so we will make the decision as a campus so that you don't have, you know, we'll span in Spanish, this counts more, and in English, this counts more. It's hard to keep track of all that different stuff, especially in the virtual setting. So we will come up with category weight by campus. Um, and then these other two bullet points are mandated by the district. We have no say so in them whatsoever. Each teacher um, must have a minimum of two grades entered into their grade book per week per course. So um, if your child takes eight classes, then you should anticipate that you have two grades for each of those eight classes every week entered. Um, this is a a best practice because it allows parents and students to know where they stand and that's especially important in a virtual setting because you don't have someone there constantly giving you feedback as you would in the classroom. Um, so we will make sure that we're monitoring that and I would ask you as parents to let me know um, if and when it's not happening so that we can um, make sure that it is. Um, right now HISD high schools have final exams accounting for 25% of the entire semester average um, but the district is putting together a committee themselves to find out if we will proceed in that way or if we will decide to change the um, percentage for final exams. So that is forthcoming, but right now as it stands, it's 25%. Um, if and when that changes, I will let you all know through another bullet. This part here for attendance is very, very tricky, and you may not be able to see this very clearly, um, so I'll talk it through, and then I have another slide that kind of simplifies it. So for attendance, and when I say attendance, I'm talking about the average daily attendance. So in the physical setting, um, ADA, average daily attendance, was taken at the second period of the day. Right, so if your child was absent for the second period of the day, they were counted absent for the entire school day, regardless of whether they came back and they attended third and fourth period. If they were not there for second period, they were marked absent for the entire day. So this is, this is what I'm referring to, average daily attendance. All right, so the day begins and your child is given an assignment that they collected from the hub, right, which is where we collect all, we put out all instructional assignments. So if, a, if an assignment was submitted by the student for that class on that day, right, that says yes, then they're marked present for the day. If an assignment was not submitted for that class for that day, the answer is no, 
And so then we ask the question, okay, well, there's a team's teacher student interaction piece. Did they attend that meeting? If the answer is yes, they attended the meeting, then they're marked present. Okay. If the answer is no to both of those things, then what will happen is the following day we will run, Ms. Perot will run a Hub 360 report. And if that child has shown, has demonstrated that they are engaged for a minimum number of minutes, we don't know what the minimum number is yet, that's gonna come from the district. But if they show the minimum number of minutes engaged, then they will be marked present for that previous day. If they did not log in, for a minimum number of minutes, they didn't attend the meeting and they hadn't submitted an assignment, they will be marked absent, okay? Let me go to this next slide that simplifies it. So we asked two questions to ourselves. Was an assignment submitted for that day? Did the student attend the team's meeting with the teacher? If the answer is no to both of those questions, then the student has until 11.59 p.m. To, to be engaged for the minimum number of minutes. So let me give a scenario. It's Monday and Dixie was assigned, um, you know, a lab by Miss Epp. And Miss Epp says that Dixie did not submit her assignment. Okay, well, there was a Teams meeting at three o'clock. Did she attend that? No, she didn't. Okay, great. So she's marked absent for the day. You as the parent are gonna get a phone call saying, Dixie was marked absent for the school day. She has until 11.59 to engage in her work for the minimum number of minutes. And if she does not, she will be marked absent for the day, okay? So then the next morning comes, Tuesday morning comes, Ms. Perot gets on her computer, she runs the Hub360 report, and it shows every student on campus alphabetically, and then it has a certain number of minutes next to their name. If Dixie ended up logging on at 11 o'clock at night when she got home from work <laughs> and did something, and, it, and, and whatever she was doing lasted for that minimum number of minutes, let's say it's 15, she was online for 15 minutes, Ms. Perot will go in and change Dixie's attendance to present, okay? It's a very intricate process and it's very laborious. And so um, we highly, highly recommend that you encourage your child to be online at the time of the meeting and to get their assignment in within the day. Um, it's so important because if they continuously say, oh, I wanna sleep in, I'll do my work later, it's going to build up. And those of you that have been at Eastwood for at least a year, you know how much work Eastwood gives and you know how, how, how stringent our teachers are about the quality of work that our students are producing. So um, please, please, please um, work with your child to set up a schedule so that they're not following falling behind um, each time they're getting assigned something. Assignments are linked to attendance um, and it's audited. So please make sure that you encourage them to stay on track. And if you need help from us in developing a schedule, um, we plan to teach our students all about how to keep schedules in the first week of online school as well, okay? All right, you guys too will have, this is kind of what the district is doing. They are going to uh, make live an online introductory course um, so that you will be exposed to the Hub, Microsoft Teams, how to access all of the Parent Student Connect accounts. Um, and you'll just kind of learn all of the same tools that your child will be required to use. They will also provide a service where you can book an appointment to talk to someone one-on-one -on -one, um, about the different accounts and of course they have the service desk and the HISD hotline but as always I am here to answer your questions one-on-one -on -one as well um, you can email me if you um, you know are in doubt like oh I'm not sure if Miss Lita is the one to talk to or I don't want to bug her or all that good stuff um, first of all don't think that but second of all um, you can just send an email um, and if I am not the person to kind of walk you through something, then I will uh, put you in contact with the person that can help you best. Um, before we get there, let me show you um, our different platforms here. And I'm just gonna double check this chat to make sure we're okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to share a different screen with you all so that you can see kind of what everything looks like. So this is Microsoft Teams. Um, this is the communication platform. You will see that each square is a different team that I am in. I have an uh, Eastwood staff only, and this is the one for summer school. 
So when your child logs onto Teams and if they're on their um, HISD laptop, this is kind of what it looks like. You click on your team. All righty, there we go. And so this is this was our summer school teams. We have all of our students logged in. I create these things down here are called channels. So this is our algebra one class, our biology class, chemistry, et cetera. And so what the teacher does um, for summer school is they would post daily. This is summer school day 14, please sign in here. And this is your work for the day. And then students can acknowledge it by clicking like or the heart. Um, can take you over chemistry where it gets really funny. Um, and so Mr. Uh, Gary would often put, you know, post a gift for the day um, or make me laugh or something. And so the kids would um, often reply in their own way um, or mention something positive that has happened. And so this is just kind of the communication platform. There are also um, some tools over here like the calendar and like meetings that you have and then you have a chat function which is really cool because a lot of students will say like oh I didn't get you know um I didn't get such and such from a particular teacher can you help me well the beauty of the chat function is that all you got to do is start typing in the name of the teacher or any employee or any student in HISD and their name will populate automatically and you can have a private chat um, with that person. You can do it through typing just like you would like on Facebook Messenger or something um, or you can do it through video so that one-on-one -on -one we can have a conversation and see each other and talk to each other live. That is key because um, a lot of our students got help one-on-one -on -one from our teachers in, uh, using that platform. So we highly, highly encourage um, getting to know Teams. Now I'm gonna share with you um, the other platforms that we have. All right, so um, this is our YouTube channel. Whenever you go to, and I'll have the links posted on the last slide, uh, youtube.com slash, slash HISD Eastwood Academy. You will see our YouTube channel and you will see that we constantly kept parents informed. We posted daily announcements all throughout the spring semester. It was a lot of work, but it was worth it because people were informed. And so if you subscribe to this YouTube channel, we plan to do the same exact thing once the school year begins. Um, we will post daily announcements um, from the first day of school all the way through the last day of school. And then we will also do um, weekly updates that are just, you know, here, here's what, I'm sorry, monthly updates. Like, here's what's going on in the district. Here's what you need to know. Um, and then I will blast those out, obviously, on all of our social media accounts and send a boxer uh, bulletin. Um, so some of the other things I want to show you here is the hub. So remember, the hub is where we go to access all of the curriculum. So when a child logs on to their hub account, this is what they'll see. They'll see the Eastwood landing page. Um, we always post the weekly announcements there so that there's no excuse of, oh, I don't have, you know, this platform or I didn't see it or I didn't get the email. Um, if you're required to log on to the hub every day for school, then you're going to be forced to see the announcements for the day because they're right there. Um, and then we put um, updates about, you know, uh, the different summer meals and the SNAP benefits, uh, things that came out. And then we also have student documents here. So anytime uh, they needed to access the student handbook or the faculty handbook, they're there. They've been there all year long. Um, and then any other documents they needed to, you know, have a fundraising or request um, an event, et cetera, et cetera. And then their courses are listed here. So any class that they're enrolled in will be listed in this um, section here. And it just, it's, it's great because it's one place for the teachers to put all of their curriculum. So this is a class, a training that I took. Um, and so they had their PowerPoints here, they have resources, there's a grade book, there's tasks that you can, that the teacher will pin here so that the student knows exactly what they need to be doing for that day or for the week. Um, so the hub is not new, the hub's been around for about seven years now. <laughs> so your child should be very familiar with it, um, especially at Eastwood Academy. We've been using it. So let me close that. This is the Eastwood Academy at home page that we created um, specifically for virtual learning. And you'll see in this uh, menu here, there's different sections. When you click on um, Eastwood Teachers, um, 
We gave you information about when they're available, some online etiquette, a lot of bulletins that I would post. And then whenever you click on a teacher, it tells you exactly what you need to know about how to get in contact with that teacher, how you were supposed to be accessing assignments during the spring semester, um, and it's by teacher. Okay, and then of course there was um, a moment in time when we asked students to show some uh, appreciation for their teachers. There's a bunch of resources on here. So anytime I created a bulletin or there was something that needed to be blasted out to the community, um, we put them all here. Um, so it's chock full of information. Anytime you had a question that you wanted to ask, you could fill out this form and it went straight to Miss uh, Dixie Morales and she was able to answer those questions live. And then of course, this is the Boxer Bulletin. This is so, I'm so glad I'm able to show this to you all. Um, so the good thing about this is that um, when I send these out, it's in English because that's my primary language. So I type all of this out in English. And then whenever you access it from a computer, it has a translator here and you can translate it to any language you want. So I just chose Chinese just for fun. We'll see here. And it translates the entire document for you. Okay, so that's really helpful for our Spanish speaking families. Um, it'll translate here. Um, the thing that uh, in my last bulletin that I sent out, I said, please make sure that I have your um, your email address. The quickest way to do that is to click this button here that says follow Principal Lira. When you do that, you put in a name, you put in your email address, and you click get updates. What that does is it adds you to the Boxer Bulletin distribution list automatically. And so if I go to send an email from my email account and not through a bulletin, what I do is I log into this account and I export all of the subscribers' emails. So it's what you entered. And then I create an email and blast it out to everyone. Um, just be very, very careful when you're entering your email address um, that there's no typos or anything like that because a lot of emails bounce back to me um, because they're not entered. correctly. And then the last thing I want to show you is just the HISD reopening page, which I'm sure all of you have seen. Um, and just know that it has uh, tabs now for the different uh, topics. So with academics, which is what we talked about today, um, you will see the full um, instructional continuity plan here that breaks out kind of, you know, everything that we talked about today as far as, you know, number of minutes and logging in live and where to access your platforms. Alrighty, so now let me go back to our presentation slide. We're almost done. Thank you guys for sitting tight with me. Okay. All right, so these are some of the questions that were submitted through the form, the Google form that I put on the last Boxer Bulletin. Um, so laptops for new students, we're scheduling a curbside pickup for the week of August 10th. We anticipate getting the laptops the week before that, but we're going to get them all ready and sanitized. Um, and then using the back pavilion drive space, we will have new families come to pick up their laptops. Um, at that time, you will also pick up the, the reading, like the books that um, Mrs. Vestal and Ms. Trindell um, plan to assign throughout the first semester. You will pick those up at that time as well. Um, and then of course, for the schedule, we plan to um, follow the scheduled periods within the day. But like I said before, since we're on an asynchronous model, if your child is not able to log in at the exact time of that period class, um, the presentation will be recorded and they can access it at their own time. But again, we highly recommend getting on at the scheduled time. This does not mean that your child has to sit in front of a computer for 90 minutes each period. We are not requiring that. Our teachers are going to decide on the minimum number of minutes for a live session. I anticipate it'll be 30 minutes <laughs> uh, for each class. And so um, in no way, shape or form should you expect your child to be like staring at a computer for seven hours in a day. Um, it's not gonna happen that way, okay? Next thing, uh, what if I'm not comfortable sending my child? Um, then you don't have to send your child. You will have a choice at each six weeks to opt in or opt out. We understand um, it's scary times and a lot of our teachers were very happy to hear that we don't have to report face to face um, for their own safety and the safety of their families. And so if you don't feel comfortable 
let us know and we'll make sure that we um, schedule your child for virtual learning. Will teachers make themselves more re readily available? Yes, we are asking teachers and all staff members, um, that's all I've been doing this entire time is each staff member mapping out kind of what I need from them as far as the communication plan. Um, all of our teachers will be expected to have posted office hours that are consistent so that students and parents can reach out if they have any questions or concerns as it relates to the learning or any grades. Um, and again, we will have all of those published on the Eastwood at Home page as well. Um, so our students gonna be asked to use masks all the time. Every single person that enters an HISD building will be required to wear a face mask while they're on campus. Um, and so the question has come up, like what if a child refuses to do so? We handle that like any other disciplinary issue, but in this situation, it is a health risk. And so they will be uh, sent home according to the guidelines from our health officials, right? So they'll be sent home, and then we'll probably, well, we will call you as a parent and, and explain, you know, the importance of wearing a mask. And if, you know, um, if need be, we will send to a virtual learning environment if there isn't uh, compliance. And that's for the safety, not just of your child, but of all children and employees on campus when, when and if we get to that point. Um, so if you're, if my child were to attend school face-to-face, -face, what would school be like? Um, so we will, we will just be normal. Once we're face-to-face, -face, it's a normal schedule from 8.30 to 4.10. Notice that 10 minute has been added to the end of the school day because we are um, trying to build in time for being able to get out early on the days of final exams and also to build in some extra time in case we have to do shutdowns or, um, you know, like we had a, a, the water main break and those kind of things. Whenever we build in a little bit more minutes in the school day, uh, we're able to have those types of uh, rainy days, if you will, without having to make up the time. That's not an Eastwood thing, that's an HISD um, mandated time. And these are the resources that we've been talking about today. If you want to take a screenshot of those, um, uh, web addresses there. Those are going to be your friends throughout this entire time. I'll pause just for a second before I go to the very last slide, which has all of our um, social media platforms. Okay, so um, Eastwood of Communication, this is our commitment to how we plan to communicate with you. The other thing that's not on here is obviously the uh, school messenger. Um, the phone calls that go out, the automated phone calls with either my voice recorded or Ms. Dixie Morales' voice recorded. The reason those haven't been active right now is because Mr. Menno was the account holder <laughs> and he tried to give us access, but it didn't work. And so we finally uh, got the email just a few minutes ago that we now have access to our school messenger account. So we'll be sending those out as well. Um, but for email, all you got to do is go to that box or bulletin and click subscribe or the follow Principal Lira orange icon, and I will have your email if you do that. Um, and then these are our, our social media accounts where we constantly blast information to try to get you guys to uh, read the bulletins and, and stay up to date with all of our meetings. Okay, so let me go to our q and a is miss dixie back with us before we start that hang on one second yes miss dixie's there <laughs> so is the breakout room closed now okay so we will start our um question and answer section if we that was a lot of stuff and i know i talked for a really long time um, but if you have any questions about anything that was uh, mentioned or um, any questions that weren't mentioned, please uh, feel free to raise your hand. And when you do um, chime in, if you could just unmute yourself so that we can hear your question. Okay, I have a couple that were written in. So um, will 504 accommodations be followed? Yes, absolutely. Um, 504 special ed, uh, those are federally mandated items. And whether you're in a virtual setting or in a face-to-face -face setting, they are non-negotiable. So all of our teachers will still, uh, the same process will be followed. Ms. Stanley will be sending um, to all the teachers the child's 504 accommodations, special ed accommodations, any other things that are um, mandated by an IEP will be followed. 
Um, and there are some special programs as well um, that we can use to work with uh, specifically students with uh, dyslexia, dysgraphia. There's a lot of technology out there that help us with some of those um, accommodations as well. So yes, all accommodations will be followed. Okay. Let's see. Um, was it the lead time for every decision whether or not to attend each six, what is the lead time, sorry, <laughs> for, for every decision? I'm not certain, but I would anticipate that it's at the start of each six weeks. So like, for example, um, August 24th, those phone calls that are going to be made August 24th are for the second six week start time. So I anticipate that when the second six week starts, you'll be getting a phone call to make a decision about the third six weeks. Um, and the more time, the more lead time we have, the better, because then we have to try to figure out if we need to change schedules or if we need to, um, the teacher can plan for the online uh, and the face to face instruction separately. Okay, have another one. If we choose to opt out for the rest of the year, can the student still attend face-to-face -face during a given week in case the student feels they need more help from a teacher face-to-face? -face? Um, so it's unclear right now whether or not um, they'd be able to attend face-to-face -face if they've chosen to opt out. Right now, what I'm being told is that a decision, um, and, and don't quote because we're still waiting on some guidance from the district, but right now what has been said is um, that parents must stick to that decision each six weeks. So if you make a decision to, to, to be virtual for the second six weeks, then you remain virtual for the entire six weeks. Um, so I would think that you would not have the option to do so, but um, we will be flexible and make sure that um, students' needs are met regardless. <laughs> Ms. Dixie, there's a question there. I'm typing your questions in, your answers in. Time. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So when will new students pick up laptops? The week of August 10th is when we plan to do it. And I will put together a graphic. I don't have an exact date because I have to try to figure out which employees um, I'll have at any given day. Um, and then I'm also waiting on teachers to tell me what it is that they want students to pick up. So dependent on like let's say that three teachers say, oh, can you run copies of this and have them pick up this? That requires some planning the week before <laughs> um, so that we can have everything ready for that week, but definitely the week of August 10th. And if for whatever reason you're not able to come whenever we have the, pick, the laptop scheduled pickup, um, just get in contact with us and we don't mind meeting you up to hand one off. The problem is that we need to be at an HISD facility because it needs to connect to our Wi-Fi, to the HISD network Wi-Fi before you can use it at home. Okay, uh, let's see. So the book pickup will happen at the same time um, as the laptops, but that is just for um, incoming ninth graders at the moment. We will be scheduling curbside pickup of materials for other grade levels. For example, Mr. Williams, um, for his uh, A-Push classes, he does have a book that he wants kids to pick up. And so we will have to schedule times by grade level to do a pickup of materials. But that will happen probably, um, probably the week of August 24th. So within those two weeks, right before the first day of school, um, we will have pickup for other grade levels as well. Okay. Um, so if we... If we pick on August 24th to have virtual classes for the second six weeks, we can't change it at the end of the first six weeks. Things will be different at the end. You're absolutely right, Ms. Chaitis. Um, and, and so I'm not sure if there will be um, a second round of decisions. I know they're trying to make them pretty quickly because if we do it too close to the start of the six weeks, then it's, it's just logistically, it's kind of complicated because if, if right now, or on August 24th, we know that we have 100 kids coming to us, that's great. We can plan for having the social distancing requirements met in the classroom um, for 100 kids. But then if at the last, like if we plan for that and say, okay, we're gonna have this many kids in each classroom, that's great, it works out, everybody's in safety requirements. Um, but then if right before the six weeks start, suddenly 250 change their mind, right? Then we have 350 kids we have to accommodate, and now it's not possible because it's too many kids in a classroom. Um, so I think that's why they're trying to build out the spacing so that we can transition. And then hopefully by the time we get to the point where um, 
you know, we're getting into the third six weeks or whatnot, hopefully this virus has let up and we don't have as many restrictions um, as we do right now. Okay. Uh, will a schedule be provided of the online timeframes for each teacher? So your child will be following the schedule um, and we'll send out schedules. Ms. Dixie, when can we get schedules out to all students? Two weeks prior to school starting. So. Okay, so August 24th-ish. Okay, so the week of August 24th, your child will receive their schedule that they will have for the school year. And um, once they get that schedule and the school year begins, we have 15 days from the first day of school to change a schedule. After 15 days, we can't change a schedule at all, right? And so um, the expectation is that a teacher will have a live session within that class period, right? So if I'm a teacher and I have four classes today um, and my first class meets at 8.30, then I'm going to be online for my virtual meeting from 8.30 to nine, as an example, right? And then I'm not going to, I'm not going to require second period to come to me until second period begins because that would be unfair, right? If I require second period kids to all meet with me at 8.30, but they have a first period teacher that's requiring them to meet at 8.30, there's a conflict. So the, the schedule that we will publish um, will be after we have a meeting with our, te our teacher tech committee, because they're going to make decisions about those, um, like the blocks of time. So let's say the district says we have to be live for a minimum of 30 minutes, then um, our teachers still need to decide, are they gonna meet at the first 30 minutes of the period or the last 30 minutes of the period, right? So, so once we have all of those, um, find details worked out about it the exact time uh, those will all be posted on the Eastwood at home because Eastwood at home is our virtual platform um, for all information so we will definitely have a schedule so that everybody kind of knows where to go when okay let's see are there any other questions here's another one um, it's the schedule going to be uh, structured similar to the students that selected face-to-face. -face? It will be um, identical, actually. So, so let's say that once we get into the second six weeks um, and I'm the classroom teacher and I have five kids face-to-face -face with me, and then I have uh, 20 that are virtually, <laughs> that are virtual at home, um, I will still lead my class in the same way. So when I'm teaching live like this uh, to you guys that are at home, my face-to-face -face students are watching me, right? So I'm in front of the board and I'm doing demonstrations and both of y'all are hearing the exact same information for the exact same amount of time. The only difference is that after that live session is over, the at-home students will lose their connection, their live connection with the teacher. Right, they still have access via Teams, they can still chat them, they can still ask questions, but then me as a teacher, I need to focus on the kids that are in front of me and asking questions live and demonstrating and keeping them on track, right? So it, it's, it's still the same, it's just that if you're at home, then the window closes to your access to the teacher live, but there's still other ways to get in contact with them, okay? Um, sounds like live meetings will be consistent for each teacher, right? If so, that's great. That is our plan. Now, obviously, um, some teachers are more comfortable showing their faces than others. <laughs> uh, whenever I put out a survey to the teachers um, when we were in the spring semester to just kind of get their feelings about, you know, how they felt with um, doing live presentations at that time because they weren't required. Um, uh, Surprisingly, there was there was more than a handful that were like, e I don't want to, you know, be on camera. And so um, we plan to do a lot of training and encouragement around, you know, best practices. We know that it's much more valuable to see a face, to hear the tone of voice, to demonstrate something. Um, because if I had my camera off, you guys would just be listening <laughs> and you couldn't see my facial instruction. Uh, uh, expressions and whatnot. So um, yes, we plan to highly, highly, highly push our teachers um, a little out of their comfort zones to make sure we give quality instruction to students. Okay, and consistency is the name of the game. Okay, um, so this record, this entire meeting has been recorded. 
um, for the entire length of the presentation. It's going to take some time for it to download to my computer. Once it does, I will upload it to our YouTube channel and then um, I will start posting the link as soon as it's, um, it's all done. Probably won't be till tomorrow. It's a really big file at this point, um, but it'll all be available. And um, thank you, Ms. Driver. Um, I think that the name of the game, not just in a virtual setting, but even, you know, my, my commitment as a principal um, at Eastwood from the get-go has been like keeping people informed, right? The more you know, the more comfortable things feel and the amount of time with relaying that information is important because people need a, need some time to wrap their brains around a new setting, to make plans as families, um, I have two little ones here under 10 years old as well that are attending HISD schools. And so um, there's a lot of planning. There's a lot of um, mental and emotional needs uh, that have to be met, um, not just for you as a parent, but for your children as well. And so, and especially important for those of you that have multiple children in the home, um, especially at the elementary school level where they're not one-to-one -one and don't have laptops all the time. Um, there's a lot of planning that's involved. And so it is my pleasure to be able to have meetings like this to keep you guys informed. And the plan is to have these monthly throughout the school year. So, um, and they will all be recorded. So you, if you don't have the chance to get on and, and watch it live, that's okay. They'll be recorded and accessible to you all. Um, so if students change their schedule at the beginning of the summer, what will their new schedule be? So um, if we're talking about returning students, so students in grades 10 through 12, in March, you did course selections with Ms. Morales and Ms. Stanley, and you selected some classes. And then around May, uh, Ms. Morales sent you guys the list of things that you selected, right? Um, and then some of you decided, oh gosh, that's not really what I wanted. And so then you submitted a new course request change. Um, and, and, and then you guys are getting to a point where you're asking, was that honored? Did I get those classes? And so what I will say is to email um, either Ms. Morales or Ms. Varela and ask them um, whether or not you got those actual classes that you asked for the second time around because we do have summer school assignments, right? Summer assignments for um, all students. Well, not all students. It depends on what classes you're taking. Um, and those summer assignments are accessible at the Eastwood website when you click on activities and then summer assignments. So please make sure um, if you're in doubt of whether you got a certain class that you made a change for. When in doubt, just email Ms. Morales and she can confirm, okay? Uh, will hand sanitizer be provided for students who go to school? Absolutely. So the district sent us some stands, you know, the ones that, the automatic ones where you just get some hand sanitizer. We also bulk ordered hand sanitizer before it was a thing. <laughs> and so we have some in our closets um, on campus as well. And the district plans to provide face masks, disposable face masks um, for every student every single day. And then of course, teachers are gonna be required to wear them as well. So yes, all of those things will be provided. Um, of course, we accept donations, <laughs> um, but it is, it's not the school's budget that's being used to purchase these things right now. The district is providing all of the hand sanitizer and safety equipment at this time. So um, if we don't reach a um, shortage, then we should be okay. Any other questions before we end? Or comments? All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. It's so weird having these virtual meetings like this, but I love seeing y'all's faces, uh, those of you that are brave enough to show them. Um, and we will all get through this together as long as we maintain open lines of communication. So um, please be on the lookout for Boxer Bulletins each month. And if for whatever reason you're not getting them in your email, um, just let me know and I will add you manually to the list, all right? You all have a great day. I miss you all and tell your students um, I send my love and can't wait to meet them. Bye guys.